people often ask questions about uh, or or think in terms of you know you've got Lewis over here who's talking about Aslan who is a Christ-like figure and yeah it's often the case that it's a lot easier to see how Lewis is working through a kind of Christian worldview in Narnia and it can be much harder to see how someone like J.R.R. Tolkien is working through a Christian worldview because Let's face it, there's no real religion that's mentioned anywhere in The Lord of the Rings. Uh, the closest you get, some characters who look east every time they have a meal, right? That's about the most religion you get in The Lord of the Rings uh, explicitly, and it's not much. And yet, The Lord of the Rings does seem to lead people to the faith. And, and so why is that the case? Well, a lot of it has to do with the fact that J.R.R. Tolkien himself was a devout Roman Catholic who saw his own works as inherently Catholic. And he didn't mean that in the sense of there's an explicit Christ figure, and, and people have tried to do that, and you can point to a variety of characters who kind of fill that role, but there's no one of them that does, right? Frodo kind of seems to because we've got a sacrifice that goes on, but he also fails, which Christ doesn't. Gandalf dies and comes back to life again. But he also didn't do that to save, I mean, he saved a small collection of people, the other eight who were with him, but it's not some world-saving thing that's going on there. And even Aragorn is the king who's returned, right? There's a little bit of Christic stuff, but really in all of those things, could you just point to some other myth, uh, some other story, and say it's just as much a part of that tradition as it is the Christian one? So what Tolkien meant when he talked about his works as being inherently Catholic is that they're written from the Catholic viewpoint of the world, right? a kind of Catholic cosmology, a Catholic understanding of what is the real. And so you look at them and you can see how thoroughly he really has worked that out. How uh, probably one of the best examples really is how Tolkien very clearly shows evil as what we call a privation of the good, right? So that just means that what evil is, is not a thing in and of itself, it's an absence. It's an absence of something good, just as darkness is not a thing in and of itself. You can't shine darkness. You can only create it by removing the light. It's what evil is. And so when you look at The Lord of the Rings uh, or any of Tolkien's writings, that's what you see. Right? Sauron can't uh, create evil. He can only pervert and twist things. He takes the good creation of the rings of the elves that they made for themselves and twists them by the creation of his own ring. But even that's not a creation out of nothing. It's based in the same talents and gifts that he had and that they had. Right? Depending on when you're reading and where you're looking, there are a variety of stories of where the orcs or goblins came from. But one of them is that Morgoth, who is Sauron's boss, uh, took elves and perverted them. Right? Twisted them, made them, you know, live in the dark, all of these things. They're not something he created out of nothing. Right? The enemy can't create, he can only pervert. I think Frodo says something along those lines. Uh, when he and Sam are in uh, in Mordor looking for something to eat because Sam's wondering, do orcs even eat? To which Frodo says, well, yeah, they're beings still. Morgoth, Sauron, they can't create new things. They just have to take the things that are already there. And so it's this ever-present... And so that's just one example of, of evil, but it's this also this ever-present, therefore, understanding that the good is the primary thing that's there at the background of the entirety of Middle-earth that really helps show in a very subtle way the one of the kind of key truths of Catholicism, that goodness is a thing, that it is uh, an objective thing, and that it's an absolute thing. That is, it can't, it's what we call a transcendental. It can't be contained by any one material thing. Right? It, it, it transcends everything else and is present in all things. And it's, it's things like that in The Lord of the Rings that really highlight that Catholic cosmology, that Catholic understanding of the world.